Welcome to the Wine Zone. I'm Conrad Edgepick and this is Pro and Con. Today, my very special guest is Chilean master winemaker, Marcelo Papa, who oversees the production of Casillero del Diablo wines, as well as the Marquez de Casa Concha brand for Concha y Toro. Now, Marcelo, while researching the company, Concha y Toro, I discovered, I learned, that Concha y Toro has 20,000 acres of vines, of vineyards. Yeah. Wow. Do you know that that's as much as all of Ontario? That's the entire province of Ontario. We have like 17,000 acres. Yeah. Well, uh, Conrad, thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, I never realized that Ontario is that's how big, fun. Well, that, that's how small we are, but that's how big your company is. Yeah. And you're doing close to 30% of all production? Uh, 30%. 30% of all production. But the 25,000 acres is uh, concentrated on Chile. Yes. Diversity in uh, areas like Casablanca, Maipo, Maule, region. So very different. Sure. Probably 30 different vineyards. So not sure. one Only block. Not one block. No, no, no. Of no. course, not 25. Right. You need Australia for that. Right. You know, <laughs> just, just go. Yeah. This tractor goes in yeah. one direction for four days, yeah. turns around, comes back in the other right. direction. And also in Argentina and in uh, California. You own, yeah. Concha Toro owns Trivento yes. in Argentina. And the Fetzer and the Bonterra brands yes. uh, in uh, California. I represented right. Fetzer in 1984. Okay, great. When they were still Fetzer. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Jim, Jim Fetzer was in charge of it. No. Now, you have been named winemaker of the year twice in Chile. And I have read, and I'm quoting, that he makes extraordinary quality in spite of the high production levels. Yeah, right. So, I want to ask that's what people say. <laughs> that's what people say. So, I'm asking, what do you do right that other people aren't doing? I think that the, one of the strongest of the company of Contitor yeah. is that uh, we are very selective on uh, the vineyards that uh, we select right, for different uh, wines. And I think that uh, that is very important to uh, be competitive, to do good wines or excellent wines in higher uh, scales. I think that everything is start from the vineyards. If yeah. we have good vineyards, sure. that's it. But Concha y Toro has a lot of winemakers. Uh, yes, we are probably 20, but right. there are, it's a good team. Yeah. And so how come you come up to the top? No, I'm not in the top. No. <laughs> winemaker of the year, twice. I mean, yeah. I, I, what I'm saying is that you're making really good wine. Oh, so. Really, really good wine. And we tasted a bunch of them earlier today. Yeah. And I was, I was really, really excited. In fact, this wine that we're having today is the Marquez de Casa Concha Cabernet Sauvignon yeah. 2015, which is just being rolled out in Canada yeah. as we speak. So over the next months, it might be here a little earlier than in BC or Quebec, etc. Yeah. But over the next months, you will be seeing the 2015 yeah. Casa Concha coming out. Um, yeah, well, this is this so, wine, this Marquez is a wine that is for a long time here in Ontario. Yes, and I want to ask you about that. So, what's different about this event? What, how, what's the? Tell me about the new vintage. But also, for those of you who are familiar with Casa Concha from previous vintages, tell me how it's changed. Yeah, well, I think that the, there are a, li a little bit, or not a little bit. There are a lot of fashion in the wine industry, in the wine uh, world, right? Um, we pass or we pass in uh, years where um, we over extract the wines, we try to make a kind of blockbuster wines with a lot of color that delivers sweetness, color, fruit, oak, uh, a lot from a lot of things. Yeah, right. we did the same thing in Ontario. We tried to make yeah, exactly. classic wines out of right. when, instead of just I, making what should be made. Yeah, I don't know when was the peak of that. Yeah. Then more is more. Well, for some people they Maybe have not taken it, for others who passed it. Yeah. Right, exactly. And um, and I think that it's it's a it's a it's a good style for people that uh, for consumers that are uh, in in, in, his, in in the initiation, right? Because people feel the wines and feel the difference and all that. But uh, when you want, and, and I want to express as best as possible the origin of the vineyards in a bottle of wine. 
probably for consumers that is going to be strange. But I think it's very important because in this case, this is a my vocabulary, and I want to reflect my po character in the bottle. And so we changed a little, a little type of, a, a little type of things. One, we started to pick the grapes slightly earlier with mature fruit, but slightly er earlier. Let, uh, let, let me just explain that the maturity of grapes is going to last mm. for a couple of weeks. Mm. A couple of weeks, maybe, on the vine. For Cabernet, maybe three weeks. It's like it's like any fruit, whether it's a peach or an apple. You yeah. can pick it a little, little. You have a window. Harder. Yeah. You have a window of two weeks or okay. ten days to pick the grapes. Right. If you go for a tree with plums and you pick in the in the beginning of the window, the more plum tartans. will be more more red, but good, good flavors, yeah. fresh flavors. Yeah. Then in the middle, it will be tasty, very sweet, very sweet, and, and then at the and the last part, you will. You will be a little right, overripe, right? And the juice is juicy, all oh, running like crazy, and too sweet. Right? Yeah, yeah. So for many and less acidity, and less acidity. For many years, we were speaking. At the you were end. pushing it to the end, exactly. as mature as we can get, as, as possible, high. right? Yeah. And now we are trying to come back and to move more in the middle and looking more for a type of fresh fruit, more red fruit with a little bit of black fruit, but not over over mature or jack. Right, but right. you haven't really shifted the picking date a little earlier, you've split it into several picking dates, is that yep. correct? Right. So, so explain to me how that works. We... Um, so you're picking a little bit earlier. We are picking a bit... Uh, usually the Cabernet Sauvignon in the Maipo Valley 20 years ago, or, it was picking at the end of March, beginning of April. Ten years ago, when was when we was on the on the top of the right more and more more is more yeah uh, probably we were speaking at the beginning of May end of April beginning of May already wow it's exactly. really long yeah so now we are coming back two weeks two and a half weeks and trying to pick more fresh fruit this time always mature right not, but that also green. yeah that also means we will be seeing slightly lower alcohol levels uh probably in between one to 0 0.5 alcohol degrees lower. less lower. Yeah. but also with a feeling of less sweetness because not that the alcohol adds sweetness into the wine a jamminess a jamminess but yeah. also if you pick the the fruit too mature give you sweetness too so the sweetness that you feel is coming from the alcohol and it's coming from the maturity level. Of course. Yes. So okay. if, you, if you're coming back, uh, and then you have a less sweet taste. Less of the overripeness. Less of the overripeness. That, 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 that really high, jammy, concentrated, right. almost, That's it. almost sickening sweetness. Yes, exactly. It's, it's like and, and, what, and then that type of wine, if, if we want to reflect my po area properly or clean as, as possible. Uh, we pick that grape because you get more differentiation. Because when you overripe a Cabernet, a Cabernet, a Merlot, whatever, all always smell the same, like jam. Right, uh, because that's the end point. Right. It's the sugar because the it's jam. the end yeah. point. But if you are coming back a little bit, you start to feel the difference of the fruit character of uh, the different areas, out. the different varieties, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and different. So you start to make difference. And then it's very important how you age, how you craft that wine in the cellar. Okay. So basically, for many many years, we use uh, French oak barrels that we still new use. French oak barrels. Very yes, but normally for this oh, okay. price point, yeah. normally we use for many many years one third new, one third one year, one third two year use it, one third one third one third, one third yeah. and we keep it for sixteen months the wine. Now I'm picking earlier. And it's a more fragile aromas. So if if you put more oak, you will feel more the mocha, vanilla, chocolate that is coming the, from the, the furry fruit. texture, the thickness, yes, exactly. all of that. Right. So we are moderating that. We are using today maybe twenty five or so one quarter new new French oak. So mm -hmm. we decrease a little bit. Yeah. The, and also we add probably one quarter of the aging process. We are doing now in bottis, so casks. Botti, the big Italian casks. Classic for Barolo Barbaresco of and Chianti's. 
yeah. which are uh, 5,000 liters. Right. If you compare with a barrel, which is 225, uh, there are a, a, a dynamic, so just, very different. Just, just, just so that people can envision it, are we talking round? Are we talking standing up? Round, like a barrel? And a like, barrel. like a barrel, but not standing up like a tank. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, it's like a barrel, but yeah. big. Okay. And then, so the states are, are uh, thicker. Oh, yeah. So less oxygen, less oxid, uh, oxygenation. Well, less contact because less you, contact of oak. You want to get a little bit more right. wood, but a lot more wine. Exactly. And yeah. less, the wines are a little bit more close and less uh, open, less oxidation. So what you're saying is that this so, wine is going to be a little more sophisticated, a little more modern, a little more elegant absolutely. than a few years ago. Definitely, yeah. and uh, and I think that the previous years, the wine was more opulent, more. Uh, it was a wine that entered by the view, yeah, and by the uh, first smell. Yeah, when the thickness, just right. the, just, just the, the now, texture. Now this is thicker. a wine that uh, uh, color is good, smell pure cassis, but uh, the best is in the mouth. Mm. You get drinkability. This is a wine that you could drink one glass, another glass, and another glass. There's so much fruit. There is lots of tannin, mm. but the tannin is beautifully integrated. Mm. It, that's a 20-year wine. That's You can age that for 20 years. Yeah, we picked the grapes uh, 18 months ago. Wow. And uh, it's beautiful. It's just because it's... Um, now I feel embarrassed. It's, 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 this is called vinfanticide. It's yeah, killing it's, such a young wine. Yeah, it's amazing. I think, uh, well, and my poor area for Cabernet, it's a fantastic area, gravelly soils on the foothills of the Andes mountain, very nice different temperature between day and night, about 20 Celsius degrees. Oh, that's pretty Beautiful big, yeah. sunlight, uh, yeah. the soil doesn't have clay because it's alluvial, so it, it's a uh, Is, it, is it a small pebble or is it a big pebble? Uh, like that, big like pebble. that, like that, like that, yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, it's so the alluvial or colluvial? No, it's alluvial. alluvial. But in Maipo you could find alluvial and colluvial, but top quality, mm -hmm. top cabernets are coming from alluvial. Yeah. Right? And alluvial terraces from right. the Maipo River. So, and the, the quality of the tannins are elegant, soft, round, juicy. So, it's a beautiful... And subtle. And subtle. So, why to put more elements like mocha, Play, uh, I agree. I agree. It's like more salt and too much salt, too much pepper no, in my it's, food. It, it's beautiful like this, and, yeah. and people will enjoy like this. I'm curious why, why, uh, Chilean industry doesn't do more blending, oh. like Bordeaux. I think we do. Yeah, I think with this one is blend. This this has fifteen percent of cab uh, uh, of uh, of what? No, no has, I'm thinking the Carmenera has. Yeah. In Chile, in, in, in Chile, by law, yeah. uh, we, in order to put a single variety, layer, variety or area, uh, we need to be uh, over 75%. 75%. 75%. Okay. But we sell a lot into the European community. Yep. And by, by, by context, it's 85. 85, yeah. So this wine and the other markets, normally the reds, Chardonnay is 100%. Yeah. Pinot is 100%. Pure. Sure. But this one normally I add four to six percent of Cabernet Franc. Yeah. Um, uh, I add uh, Petit Verdot. Mm -hmm. uh, so Merlot? Uh, no. Cabernet. Uh, Cabernet a little bit. A little bit, right? But uh, one two percent. Yeah, and all that? Uh, no, but the uh, Syrah sometimes one percent. So. Oh, okay. So we're we're out of the we're out of the Bordeaux yeah, no, blend no, style no, when you buy the Syrah. Normally yeah. it's 92 percent. But I mean, you never. Th th this is not Bordeaux. It's not anything. It's Chile. This is Chile. Well, this, this is Chile. This is, is Maipo. Yeah, I know. I know. Exactly. That's Maipo. This is Maipo. But uh, many times we don't mention all the all the all the varieties involved because we will complicate too much. Yeah, who cares? Right. Really, people, most people just want to see the one on the they top. They want to see Cabernet and that's it. And, and besides, yeah. that's that's the one that leads the flavor. The Cabernet yes. is the dominant and flavor. If you smell and if you taste, Cabernet. This one is Cabernet, that's Cabernet from Cabernet. different angles. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Every, every side you if, look at it. If you're going e even deeper, you smell and you taste, is my Cabernet. 
It's well, that's the hard part for me is finding the Maipo. I find the Cabernet. Yeah. I find Chile. But now to 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 differentiate between Maipo and Aconcagua and well, it's very Pirque, for me, well, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, for you it tastes a hundred times. Maipo delivered cassis. Yeah. Very strong flavors of cassis. You could feel it. Um, like the old Santanita, which was right, just, just, just yes, exploded yes, with mint and cassis. Maipo is cassis okay. flavor, but when you pick the grapes too ripe, you lose the cassis. You lose the cassis, and then you just the cassis, the it's the, the cassis develop in the bottle when you pick the grapes as in this stage. Okay. So mature, but not over mature. Right. So if you go to... Uh, Aconcagua or Rapel, for example. Yeah. In Rapel, there are a lot of uh, areas with the uh, red clay and granitic subsoils. Yes. Right? So, the, yeah. More. And th those wines are, in terms of fruit character, are black fruit, black plum, and no cassis. So, very, okay, yeah. uh, a very high definition of black fruit on the nose. Interesting. Cause and I'm then in the, in, sorry, and then no, in no, the nothing, it, uh, you feel the clay. Fashion. Clay produce more power, firm, tannic, uh, less elegant wines in, in a good in a good way. Right. right? But uh, Rappel are more power, or Maule are more power. My is more delicate, it's more elegant, and always with the cassis. Excellent, I love it. See, when I'm thinking of terroir or, or earth. I think more of the structure. I don't think as often of the nature of the fruit, but that's interesting yeah. the, how the fruit changes according yeah. to terroir. Here you need to, f to think on Andes Mountain, yeah. alluvial terrace, yeah. uh, 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 gravelly soil, that's it. And, and it's very, very little water. <laughs> and very, <laughs> well, very little it rains water. in Maipo uh, in between 200 to 300 millimeters a year. So. 30 centimeters. Sure, but when? In winter. Yeah. And uh, the, just to get an idea, in Bordeaux area that they don't irrigate the vine because yeah. it, it it rains all the year, they get in between 900 to 1000 millimeters. Yeah. So that the other 700 millimeters, whatever, yeah, yeah. Oh, we, need, we need to, to give to the plant. It's sure. not, it's not survive. Sure. Sure. Okay, now, now, Marcelo, your heritage is Italian. Yeah. How many generations back? My four grandparents. Four grandparents. So, so, so but, father, but there's still a lot of Italian in you. Oh yeah. And, and especially when it comes to wine. And I'm want to be wondering, because I know that you have a little thing in your heart about Nebbiolo. Right. So when am I going to see a Limarolo or ah. maybe a Pio Bioresco? <laughs> 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 there's a couple of names for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah, it's good. I I really like I really like uh, Sunday, but I think that um, Nebbiolo is a quite difficult, not difficult, but it is a variety with a lot of sense of origin, uh, like Pinot Noir, the, like Pinot Noir, yeah. where because you don't have a lot of elements uh, to to cover, like Cabernet. In Cabernet, it's a more strong variety. More tasty, but then with the barrel aging, uh, you start to uh, um, flaws don't show as well as they do it, in Nebbiolo. Exactly, if it's, if it's not screwed up Nebbiolo, it's yeah, a really exactly. screwed up wine. And and, uh, Varo, and I think that Varolo, even more than um, Pinot from Burgundy, it's even more pure in terms of taste of the place. Interesting, Be because they age in bodies. So there are a less effect from the aging process. Well, those are the old Barolos. The newer ones are being aged in, in new oak, in Marie, and yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but they, they, like, like Gaia. Yes, <laughs> right? but, but also those guys are coming a little bit back. Those Gaias are coming a little bit back, yes. Yeah, uh, in yeah, fact, yeah. Gaia Gaia is toning it down a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, 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 yeah. the new thing. Yeah, so that is fashion, right? Yeah, fashion. But, but, but anyway, Burgundy, I like Burgundy, and I... I I really like uh, Pinos, yeah, but, I it, but, in, but in Pinos you could see a little bit more, the they call it the élevage, so the yeah. craft. Yes, You could see it's a little bit more how they craft the wine in the cellar and they, they build the wine in the cellar. Interesting point. Right. Interesting in, uh, point. But always more naked. You, yeah, 
Yeah, you put it there and what yeah. happens? Right, exactly. And then if you move to Bordeaux, there are more, more crafting, uh, more organ yeah. and that's it. It's I don't say manufacturing that, process. Right, <laughs> right, no, I don't say that, that it's bad or, or good. It's, you would like and enjoy both. But I say that uh, maybe all is more pure, naked. So well, because, it, because like Pinot so Noir, it, yeah, but like Pinot Noir, except for the the, 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 the the effect of the techniques, is that it you're not blending Bordeaux. Everything's blended. So no matter what happens in the year, a yeah. little more Cabernet, a little more Merlot, yeah. you know, this fix, yeah, well, will fix the wine. Yeah, it, it is the definition of every single area. Yeah. In Bordeaux area or in Napa or whatever, you have more tools. To protect the wine from, if you make a mistake, you you, you have more tools. Yeah. In uh, Nebbiolo or, or or Barbaresco or or Pinot Noir, you don't have a lot of tools to to get better in the cellar. It is or it, it, it or not. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, it's been fun. Now I understand that you like river rafting. River ah. Right. You think, you will go river rafting to Patagonia. Yeah, is that uh, on the yeah. Argentine side or on the Chilean no, side? No, Chilean side. Chilean side. So, Chilean, so what? Chilean side, very important. Yeah. I like Argentina, but... It's the, too fun. Yeah, yeah. Little, in really the, little in a, right, in a, the, the Andes Mountain divide Chile and Argentina. But the Argentinian side, it's it's like that. Yes. Right? And the Chilean side, it's like Plunk. that. Plunk. So the river moves yes. like that. Yeah. And, and that's uh, what you like. Yes, of course. Now I want to tell you about the Canadian extreme version. Okay, right. Okay, which is called whitewater canoeing. Okay, okay. where you have an open canoe, yeah. where you're on a paddle. Right. Right, and you're going over waterfalls and rapids. Okay, right. my son does this all. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. You, you will die, but that's okay. That's not my problem. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. That's yeah. fantastic. In fact, listen, thank you for coming in. I'm so thrilled that yeah. you were you were here today, uh, well, and thank you for joining us at here on Pro and Con. My guest has been Marcelo Papa, master winemaker for Concha y Toro, responsible for this uh, Marquez de Casa Concha, which is available uh, or will be very soon at Vintages in the Essentials. It's twenty one ninety five, and if you have a chance, try a bottle. And come back again for our next show. We're going to have more interesting guests. So see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. And that's that. Okay. Cheerio. Very good. That was good. Now I'm going to cut this all up. Hope it all worked. Good job. That was great. Yeah. Wow. <laughs>